We've got a short amount of time really to sort of get to know the lake. Brad literally just rang me to say, you have got fish all over your spot. Look at the wrinkles on it. You need to be observing everything. Nothing happens, we need to make something happen. Absolutely, yeah. That was a bit out of the blue, to be honest with you. Both myself and Brad thought I'd tend to have gone on this ball. Oh, mate, that looks ridiculous. Can't believe how nice the stock are. I will be coming back very soon. Right, you ready? Yeah. You sure you're ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Welcome to episode two of Against the Clock. If you haven't watched the first episode, check it out on the YouTube channel. But the basis behind this series is myself and Brad here come to day ticket venues with multiple lakes on site and we have to catch fish within a certain time period from, each, from a number of different lakes. So today we've got 48 hours at our disposal and I have traveled up to Nottinghamshire and we are at A1 Pits. And it's somewhere I've never been before personally fishing. I've been down here once in the winter to do some product filming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've never never set eyes on five of the lakes because we only visited one on that day. And um, it's quite apparent, it's really mature and there's snags everywhere, which is right up my street. So I think we should go and yeah. have a nose. Grab some buckets, get the Polaroids on. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be some edge opportunities. Essentially, it's going to be warm and, today. Uh, so. Yeah, that sun's peeking through, so maybe a bit of float of fishing. Maybe, yeah, we'll see. Let's so, go yeah. and have a look. What's going on here? I've seen a few. Yeah, so first corner that I've walked into and it's quite deep in the edge and instantly I've seen fish coming through like but they're coming through quite fast as if it's more of a like motorway as opposed to a feeding area but I think the plan of attack is just to bait loads of little edge spots if everywhere is like this obviously I might change my mind when we walk around but yeah if there's loads of little nooks and crannies where we can put some bait I think just bait loads of different spots and just keep an eye on them. So there might be a lot of steps done today, Al. I think so, mate. But yeah, so I reckon we start the timer. And the minute I put this first little bit of bait in, and then the 48 hours will begin. There's literally too many options for spots. There's clear, cl little clearings in each each swim where the fish have clearly fed in the past. So um, yeah, it's not like we're stuck for options, is it, Brad? <laughs> so myself and Brad have had a little walk down this causeway between pits three and four. Um, this gives a really good access point to look in both lakes. Obviously, we don't know where we're going to end up fishing yet, so we want to keep our options open. 
So we're just taking a bucket round with a little bit of bait, priming a few areas. Hopefully we can see a few fish feeding on to give us a sign of where to start. But I think for the time being, we'll carry on walking down this bank, see if we can see any signs and then hopefully sort of hatch a bit of a plan. It's approaching midday now and we've had a really good walk around. Seen the, quite a number of fish, all seem to be quite close into the edge. Um, but if they're not on the edge, they seem to be up in the layers out in the middle of the lake. So the plan of action is, um, I've come back round to my swim and Brad's managed to get a few fish feeding at close quarters just down the margin to the right of this swim. So we feel like that is our best chance to put a fish on the bank straight away. So what I'm going to do is get a rod knocked up, get a solid bag onto that rod and with Brad's help get that positioned in place and I think that might be our best option. What do you reckon mate? Yeah, so I think with that rod, because they're already there feeding, excuse the train. Got a lot of trains here at A1. Wait for that to go by. Yeah, because there's already a number of fish feeding down there, you don't want to bang a bag straight on top of them. So I think we'll work as a team. Yeah. Get the baiting pole out. And if you cast a really light lead over the back of the pole, okay. I'll bring it back in with the pole and then clip, clip on your solid bag, loop to loop or whatever you want to do. And then we'll just lower it onto the head and try and just nick a quick bite that way. Yeah. But while you're doing that, once we've got that rod out, like you say, there's a lot of fish up in the water. So I'm going to ping some floaters out. I think it's worth a shout, definitely. Definitely. It's gone a bit overcast now, but I still think there's a very good chance of getting them going. Well, with those fish feeder down that edge spot, I think we really need to get a rod in position because, um, yeah, it seems like it's our best bet. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Nice Try one. and make a quick one. Oh, I'm not, I'm no master at making solid PVA bags, but that'll do the trick, I reckon. One of those, on the spot. Nice little mix in there, which I'll run through later. Bit of pellet, bit of snail, and an NS1 mini hook bait. Let's get it out there, see if we can uh, get one of these carp on the bank. I'm all rigged up with my small little lead. And um, what I'm going to do is hopefully, fingers crossed, make minimal disturbance, cast over the pole that Brad's going to put in first time. That's if it all goes to plan. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm going to stand in the swim here, Brad's going to nip round the corner, he's going to ship the pole out, get it in position, I'll cast over it, he'll bring the rig back in, well, the lead back in, swap it over to my solid bag rig and lower it down into the position. And hopefully that'll put the fish on the bank. But, um, yeah, I just need to make sure I get this cast done first time to keep that disturbance to a minimum because it's fishing and swim and we don't want to spook them off. So, uh, yeah, let's get to it. While Brad was shipping out the poles, he rang me quickly to let me know there was a number of fish feeding down on the spot, so the pressure was now on. I managed to get the lead over the pole first time and luckily the fish were none the wiser. The fish were still feeding comfortably down on the spot and I felt like a bite was imminent.
well, that was heart in the mouth stuff. Brad literally just rang me to say, you have got fish all over your spot. And then all of a sudden I started to get these hefty liners. I was just sitting on my hands, it's exciting stuff. And then it's just pulled up tight. There's a weird tape, it's sort of kited on a tight line. I didn't know whether it was sort of a, another good line or the fish was on, but yeah, we are connected to the first fish of the day. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get this one in. And it'll be a start to the challenge. And we'll get, oh, let's grab the going here. There's the A1 train running by in the background there. It's nerve wracking stuff because I can see that fish down the margin here in this clear water. Oh, you just don't want to rush it at this point. As much as I want to get this fish on the bank, I just can't rush it. Come on, baby. Yes, Bradley. Well done, mate. Yes, that'll do. Off the mark, geez. Put it there. That's pit three done. There we go. First day. Bit of teamwork, about to be fair. Bit of teamwork. But I don't want to leave pit three just yet. No? Because I've got some fish feeding down the bank in the edge as well. Well, I think what we should do is get this fish, have a look at it, and let's head round there and have a look at your swim. Yeah, let's do it. Look at the wrinkles on him. He is crusty. There we go, Brad. How about him? He's proper nice, isn't he? Lovely old car from pit number three at A1 Pits. Definitely got a story to tell. And to be fair, he'd come quite quick actually. That rod's probably been out about an hour or so. Yeah, probably around. There goes the train. That train does my head in. <laughs> yeah, I reckon about an hour or so that rod's been in the water. Yeah, probably, give or take. That solid bag with the pink NS1 Mini has done the business, so, um, we need to decide what we're doing now, don't we? Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go and check the med spots again, and then uh, if there's fish on them, I'm going to have a go. Yeah, I think it's your turn, mate. Well done, Dave. Cheers, man. It's first fish for challenge. Oh, doesn't want to go. There we go. Yes. So, Grice has just slipped back that fish and just come up to check the spot where I had him going earlier. And typically, all the bait's still there and I haven't actually seen anything come through either, so I think I'm just gonna leave it for an hour or so, and I think what we should do is probably go and have a look at some of the other lakes, because obviously we've ticked three off technically. Um, so yeah, we might have a walk around one and two, and maybe pit four as well, see if we can find an opportunity somewhere, or at least sort of plant the seed for what we're gonna do tonight. So I'm gonna get the bucket again and we are gonna go for a little mooch. Because this session is gonna involve a lot of walking, a lot of looking, and a lot of baiting little spots, I've tailored my margin mix to suit that. So I just thought I'd run you through it now. And basically it consists of Halibut Ultra Mix, Pacific Tuna Pellets in six mil, and some of the pro stim liver and I've got a variety of sizes in there. I've got 10 mil and I've got some 15 mil chops which are just half baits and you'll notice I've also got some crumb in there as well. I don't actually normally put boily crumb in my edge mixes. I find it can keep them in the swim a little bit too long but because we're baiting so many different spots I want them to be in the swim for longer because obviously we're walking and walking 
constantly checking all these different areas and the longer I can hold them on them little edge spots, the more chance I've got of stumbling across them actually feeding, which in return should give me an opportunity. To finish the mix off, I'll add some of the Pro Stim Liver Bait Booster. Now this will soak into all of the bait, but more importantly, it will soak into the crumb, making it heavier, which in return will make it sink to the bottom a lot faster, ensuring it doesn't get blown away in any sort of crosswind or undertow. So yeah, that's the mix, super simple. The reason I use a mix like this is there's loads of different size food items in there. Obviously you've got loads of different size pellets, which give you different breakdown times and keep the attraction and the swim working for a lot longer. So without further ado, I'm gonna get back to walking, bait a few more spots and see if we can make an opportunity. We went off in search of our next opportunity, baiting a few areas along the way. This would give us options and something to fall back on later on in the trip. So we've done a lap of one, two, and half of four. Nothing to go on. There's a few fish sat in the snags in one, so I put some bait in there, sort of like off the end of them, because you can't actually get to where the fish are. But we've come back round to three, and basically behind me here, the fish were going garrety out there this morning. They were showing all over the place, and these swims were actually taken, but they've left, and now the day's sort of gone on, it's warmed up a bit, and there's a few fish up in the water. So I've just introduced some floaters and I'm gonna keep on doing so over the next half an hour or so. But I've had a few fish taken already, so there might be an opportunity here. So I'm just getting my floater rod at the ready because I haven't actually used any floaters whatsoever this year. Typical British summertime, it hasn't been very warm. We had about two weeks, didn't we, which I was busy, so I couldn't get out. But, um, yeah, I'm going to knock this up, keep feeding, and hopefully something pre presents itself within the next hour or so. If not, we'll be on the move again. Bit of oil. Give them a shake around, get them all coated. Oh, they're taking close in. Put them out to the right let the drift take them across the front of the swim. It's like they get to that sort of line and then they start taking. You're telling me there's not going to be a chance, Al? It's got to be in there. They're going to mug me off. You may notice I've moved swims. Basically, I've just leapfrogged down from where I was just one swim. And that's because the way that the wind's blowing is sort of blowing diagonally across the lake off my back. And if I was to fish in there, where the fish are actually starting to take confidently, I'll get quite a big bow in the line. And obviously that will drag the rig and float out of position quicker and give me an unnatural presentation. So just move down means I can get a nice straight line to where they're feeding. And also there is a bush in the edge in the swim next door, which looks a bit hairy. And this will give me a much better angle to play them away from that bush, if you like. So. Yeah, I'm just going to put a couple more spots of floaters out. They're, they're starting to look almost catchable now. So, but Alex tells me he's had a go on here before and they can be moody. So we will see what today is like. Well, it didn't actually look like it was going to happen, to be fair. The fish just sort of switched off a little bit after I introduced a few more spots. I had one cast, 
and then they just stopped feeding completely and the ducks ruined it. And then um, I noticed one sort of like rogue fish on its own, just, just snaffling a couple, sort of like a lot shorter than the bulk of the mixes were. So I've just chucked it out there and left it and it's gone within five minutes, I suppose. And we're away. I don't think it's a very big one, but it's not about size. Tell you what, they're a proper lovely colour in here. That clear water, don't know if make them go dark. Weird old character, this one. Yeah, come on then. Yeah, come on. Hey. Right, then, mate. Cheers, dude. Get out. That's definitely free ticked off then. Yeah. Got to hatch a plan now. Got to hatch a plan. Look at them little pearly scales. Well, look at that ancient old creature. Like yours, Gricey, seriously old. Almost blue, he's that black. Loads of little lovely scales over him as well. Well happy with him. And it means I've ticked off pit free as well, even though we're doing it together. It's always nice to catch one as well. But yeah, I think um, we'll get him back, head over to either pit four, pit two, or pit one for the night, I guess. But yeah, well made up. Now there is actually a few fish still feeding out there, but we do need to move on. But before we do, I just thought I'd show you the, the mix that I was putting out there. It's, two different types of floating pellets. You've got our 11 mil floating trout pellets and then some of the old trusty pedigree chum mixers as well. And all I've done to them, just to give them a little boost of attraction, is glazed them in some smoked chorizo oil and then give them a little dusting in some salmon microfeed as well, just so bits and particles break off when they're out there and hopefully draw more fish up to the surface layers. So yeah, super simple, very effective. And another train! Right, let's go, let's move. We regrouped back at the vans as the evening was now fast approaching and we needed to make a decision about where we were going to plot up for the night ahead. Well, the barbecue's on, and me and Brad are absolutely starving. We've been working hard today, trying to put a few fish on the bank. We must have done two or three laps of each late. Well, certainly pits two, three, and four, um, looking for fish, keeping on the move. And um, yeah, it's been really good. It's been successful. We've had one off the bottom early doors, which I caught on the solid bag, and then Brad managed to snare one off the surface on pit three later on in the afternoon. So. Um, we're gonna get some food down us now. We, we've settled on four for this evening. We've not actually got the rods out yet. Um, we thought, oh, we'll get a bit of food down us, have this, fill ourselves back up, get a bit of energy, and then we can focus on getting the rods out ready for the evening. So um, yeah, we'll get this down us and uh, report back to you later on. I love a barbecue shot. It's so coffee. 
So this is the swim that I've decided to set up in for the night ahead. Now, the reason I've chosen this swim is over my shoulder, there is a snag line and I've been around there and there's a few fish ghosting up and down that sort of edge tight in, some a little bit further out. And we've seen a couple show sort of 10, 15 yards off it. Um, so I'm definitely gonna get a rod over there for tonight. I'm not sure, but I'm half debating sort of only fishing one rod because fish that we have seen in the edge have been really tucked in. They're lower in the water in shallower water. Whereas if you come out really deep and unless you're fishing up in the water on zigs, which I'm not really a fan of doing at this time of year, to be honest, I think you're um, wasting your time. So I might just fish one rod in their front room where they are and hopefully that will do the trick. And all I'm gonna do is basically the same as what Alex is doing, just a little solid bag. I've got some mini Ultra Mix and some Pacific Tuna Booster Powder in there. And then just a little pink NS1 mini hook bait. And we're probably gonna replicate what we've done earlier. So I'll go around there with the pole, ship the pole out, get out to cast over it. And then I can tie the bag on and drop it ever so quietly and very precisely as well. So yeah, we're losing the light, so we better get cracking. I decided to go with the same tactics that I used over on Pit 3, the solid PVA bags, as this gave me a maximum level of attraction and ensured that I was presented, even if I was to land over some debris on the lake bed. I positioned a solid PVA bag tied up against the snag line, just on the drop off of the marginal shelf as I felt this would be a natural patrol route for those passing carp. The other two rods were positioned on top of a plateau out in open water. This was considerably shallower and I felt it would give me the best option of catching the carp considering the warm temperatures we were experiencing. I introduced a dozen large spawns over the two rods and used a mix similar to what Brad was using, incorporating some pellets and the new pro-similar boilies. Before we knew it, darkness was drawing in and we went into the night brimming with anticipation. We were both up at first light looking for any crucial signs, but worryingly the carp weren't playing ball. On the Red Bull already. <laughs> Gotta be done, mate, after all them steps yesterday. Busy all day yesterday, wasn't it? It certainly was, but a very quiet night. Too quiet for our liking, really, to be honest. Yeah, but I feel like now, from what we've seen yesterday and what we've seen this morning, sort of hatching a bit of a plan of what they're doing, sort of like piecing together the jigsaw, if you like. Well, yeah, we've got a short amount of time, really, to sort of get to know the lakes, haven't we? That's the thing, like, you need to be observing everything. Yeah. And it's quite evident from what we've seen so far that they're moving with the sun. Yeah, it is, yeah. So yeah. Ev everywhere the sun hits, the fish end up there. So, like so yesterday evening, sun was hitting them snags where I'm fishing to, and there was loads in there. This morning, all the bait's still there and I haven't seen anything come through. So what you're thinking is basically those fish turned up there last night. Yeah, I reckon so. Probably from about three, four o'clock onwards. They're there for that sort of evening period. And then they're pushed out into the deeper water in the night. 
Yeah. So I think today we need to hatch a plan to potentially catch one out of here if we can. If not, maybe give it till midday and then get on our toes. I think we probably need to get on our toes really. The good, I mean, the good thing about A1 pits is you've got the access to the van and the right behind where you're yeah, fishing, so ideal. you can stay on the move quite easily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we well, to be fair, we, we haven't got the time to sit out here all day and hope for one. No, We're no. going to have to sort of see the morning out, play it by ear and then really get on our toes and see if we could make an opportunity happen elsewhere. Yeah, the frustrating thing is like, I've been up to pit three where we were yesterday, this morning, and they are going bonkers <laughs> on there. And it's like, I just want to go and have another go. But yeah, we've got a challenge to do, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I'll finish my Red Bull. You'll probably have a coffee or something. Just get then... some breakfast down there, get, get a bit of energy going. Yeah, and then we'll start it all over again, I guess. Yeah. Got to make something happen. Got to stay positive, haven't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no negativity. I but... mean, it's been a quiet night, but... That's the only deflating thing. Yeah. But we'll see what happens throughout the morning. And then um, if nothing happens, we need to make something happen. Absolutely, yeah. Sure we will. Well, that was a bit out of the blue, to be honest with you. Both myself and Brad thought our chance had gone on pit four. We'd just got all the kit packed away, thinking about maybe having a move onto another lake. And that middle rod I put up against that willow yesterday is just absolutely churned off. Yeah, and we're attached to a fish, which is absolutely spot on, really. So, <laughs> feeling a bit nervous, to be honest, because we can get this in, that's our pit four fish off the cards. So I'm um, going to take my time, manage to get it away from the snags, which is the hardest part. I'm just going to hopefully tease it into a net. Pleased about that. Pit four done, mate. Yes. So that's our morning pit for reward. This lovely old gnarly little mirror. Once again on that solid bag, really over the moon with this. And it means that we've ticked off pit four and we've done two lakes now, pit three and four in less than 24 hours. So we really needed this one for our little challenge. Hopefully now it gives us another 24 hours to uh, get on the move and get another pit ticked off. But um, yeah. Sun's getting high in the sky now, so I think me and Brad are going to wind in, get, get the vans loaded, head off, see what we can find. But yeah, thanks for paying us a visit, mate. Bye bye. For this Against the Clock episode down at A1 Fisheries, I've been using the solid bag approach. Now I've used this for all of my fishing, whether it being on three or pit four where we fished already. And for a number of reasons really, it's a very versatile presentation. And down at A1 there's a lot of edge fishing, 
fishing under trees, snags, and you're not always 100% sure what's on the lake bed. Even if you were to use a marker lead to flick it out there, it might feel clean, but there could still be little bits of twigs or debris or leaf matter laying on the lake bed, and a solid bag presentation ensures absolute 100% that you are presented with a nice little package of attraction around your hook bait. When you are PVA bag fishing, it's important to keep all the food items small. So this is my mix here. It's quite a natural mix. It's different to what a lot of people might use. It contains a few different natural products. And that's purely because when I'm fishing these really rich, clear, weedy lakes, I do like to have some sort of natural within my mix. So to begin with, all I've done is add 50% of the oily bag mix into the bucket. That contains the salmon microfeed, which is really small and helps to pack out the bag to leave no air gaps. To that, I've added 50% of the krill bag mix. That contains lots of nice little red pellets. All that, those scents and aromas coming from the krill bag mix is really attractive. So to finish it off, I've added some of our frozen water snails into the mix. You don't need a lot of these, and a lot of people actually think, can you actually use them in PVA? But if you just use them in small amounts, the PVA bag mix itself dries them off nicely, and you've still got that added natural element. And then finally, just to dampen the mix down very slightly, I'll add a small drizzle of our Marine Amino 365 liquid. Leave that to sort of settle over one or two days, let it absorb the liquid in, and you want the consistency where you can just push it together. It stays together, but then it crumbles away quite nicely. So as you can imagine, on the lake bed, when that's all broken down, that small NS1 mini hook bay will present just above all those small food items ready for when the carp come in and have a feed. When it comes to your hook bait and your hook link when you're PVA bag fishing, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Firstly, you want to ensure that your hook link is nice and short. This, make, this allows you to put the hook link and the lead into the PVA bag and allows it to be neat rather than coiled up too much. So when the fish do come in and feed, it straightens the hook link instantly and the fish becomes hooked. Secondly, you want to keep your hook bait nice and small and balanced to mimic the loose feed offerings within inside your PVA bag. There's a lot of small pellets within this mix and a lot of very light items. So you want a hook bait that naturally moves in the same way that your free offerings are fed on when the carp come in to feed. So that is how I use my PVA bags to good effect. If you haven't used them before, they're a super effective method. They're great for opportunist fishing and they give you 100% confidence when fishing over spots that you're not 100% sure about. We loaded the vans up and spent the rest of the afternoon looking around the complex. We walked about, had a look up trees, even baited a few margin spots, but unfortunately, no obvious opportunities arose. We even had a look around the bigger pits on the complex. But being on limited time, we felt that creating a quick opportunity on these lakes was very slim. Well, I've actually stumbled across some fish in the edge on pit two now, which is fantastic. Don't want to sound too enthusiastic, but this is the most we've seen in the edge all day. And out in the middle, it's silly deep. So chances of catching them on the bottom there would be slim. So. Yeah, seeing them in probably six foot of water gives me high hopes that they'll be up for a feed in that depth. I've just been balancing out my hook bait and rig. As you can see there, I've got a nice little D-rig, little tuna wafter tipped with a Northern Special Mini Pink. And I've just whittled that down to probably five or six mil in size, just as a little tiny visual sight. And yeah, we're gonna drop it in now. Hopefully I don't spook them and fingers crossed there'll be a chance either this evening or first thing in the morning.
Well, I can't believe what's just happened. As you see, all the gear's still on the barrows. No Alex to be seen. He's nipped up the shop to get some dinner for us tonight. And he was gonna put his rods out when he got back. And that's happened. Would you believe it? I've got a pit two carp in my net within an hour. And if you have a look at him, he is a ridiculous scaly one. <laughs> I was gonna be absolutely buzzing. So I'm gonna give him a ring, tell him to hurry up, and then we'll get it out. Oh, look at look that. At them. He may not be big, but he is certainly beautiful. Oh, mate, that looks ridiculous. Check him out. Al, get in this shot. Yeah, we did it, mate. We done it. Against the clock has been completed for the second time. And this time we've got I think 16 hours spare. Yeah, we've got, well, we've got another night spare, haven't we, basically? Definitely, but hopefully it's not gonna be the last fish, because like you say, we've got another night at our disposal. So I think what we're planning on doing is heading back over to pit three, where there is also some lovely dark scaly ones like this, and trying our luck to see if we can nick one more before home time tomorrow. But I am made up with him. Beautiful car. You've done pit four for us. Yep. And I've done pit two. So yeah, that's it. That's it, right, let's get it back and then get on the move again. Right, well mate. Cheers, dude. Quality. Okay, so we have moved round onto the opposite causeway to where we were earlier on pit two, and we are back on pit three now. And this spot here was the one that I baited when we got here yesterday. And I've introduced bait on it a couple of times and it's evident they've been eating it. So yeah, I'm just gonna fish one rod in here tonight, locked up. I've got the bed chair literally four foot from the rod, so. Yeah, we're gonna get it in and then Al's gone next door to me, literally a rod length away, and he's gonna plop a couple in the edge as well. So yeah, it's looking good. I've seen a couple goes through already, hence why I'm talking quite quietly. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a bit of foam on this rig just because there's a couple of clumps of silt on the bottom and I want it sitting over the harder stuff. So it will give me a visual marker when it's sitting on the bottom because I can actually see the spot and then I'll be able to see the rig kick away and make sure that it's sitting bang on where I want it. So yeah, I'm gonna get it in, get some dinner on, and hopefully we'll be rewarded either tonight or in the morning. With the pressure finally off, we felt we could relax, get them rods out for that last time and enjoy our final night at the pits. Every bite we'd had this trip either came at really short range or tight to a set of snags, so they obviously felt more comfortable in that shallower water. So Al wasted no time at all in getting his bait and pole out, shipping some rigs under the trees, and we sat back hoping for one last bite before we had to go. Well, it's been another quiet night. To be fair, from what we've found fishing over the last few days, these fish really do follow the sun. And now the sun is beating down onto the opposite bank. 
So I just feel like there may be one last opportunity to get a fish before the clock's up in about sort of five hours time. Brad actually did manage to um, catch one out the edge just on dark last night. Um, but since then it's all gone a bit quiet. So I think what we're gonna do is just have a coffee, grab a little bit of breakfast, pack down and then head around there and see if we can make one more opportunity happen before we've got to call it quits. So um, yeah, I've just finished my coffee, enjoy this morning sun and then uh, get the kit packed away and head off. We have come to the end of our 48 hour against the clock over here at A1 Pits Fisheries. It's been a great trip. We've caught fish from pits two, pits three and four on a number of different tactics and it's been rather enjoyable, hasn't it mate? Definitely, and we've done it a lot quicker than I expected yeah. us to complete it in. I thought after getting off the mark so quickly on pit three and then that first blank night on four, I was like, Mm. This could be difficult. <laughs> but yeah, you pulled it out of the bag on there and then obviously we moved over to two after loads of walking and we nicked a quick one out of there yeah. as well. It's been good, it's been really good because we've obviously had caught on different tactics before off the surface. Yeah, out and the that, edge. That's it. Solid bags, Yeah. D-rigs, so bit yeah, of everything. Bit of everything really, so it's made it a very memorable trip. Absolutely, you know. and to be fair, considering this is my first time down here, can't believe how nice the stock are. Yeah, they're beautiful. They yeah. are. They are what I class as proper old English car. Yeah, they're yeah. lovely. So I will be coming back very soon. I've already said to you I'm going to book some holiday and come and have a go for myself. <laughs> no, it's been great, mate. To be fair, and yeah, we've done it. Passed again. Beat the clock again. Beat the clock. So getting good at this. Yeah, it could, well. <laughs> it, you never know, we could fail the next couple. Of and you didn't catch a three pounder this time. No, of course, a couple of nice <laughs> fish. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with what we've caught. Like, I think we've done really well. We've had five five fish between us. Yeah, definitely. In 48 hours. Definitely. So. But like, we did have another little go this morning, didn't we? We moved over to that opposite bank to try and create one more opportunity. Had them going like a bit on floaters. Yeah. And then the wind picked up. Yeah. And it was game over. But. I I think we've made the best of the opportunities we've had. I think so, yeah. Like, it just goes to show you that if you put in the effort and you're willing to be mobile, keep on the move, like, you will catch yeah. them eventually. Yeah, absolutely. Because while we've been here, how many fish have you seen actually get caught? I've not seen anything being caught on three. We saw one guy lose one on four. Yeah. And that's about it. Mm. Yeah, so actually, considering that, I feel like we've done pretty well. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're going to head off home. Better hit the road. I'm going to stay for another hour, I think. <laughs> yeah, you know. Because I've got a score to settle. Okay. But, um, yeah, if I do manage to nick one, yeah. I'll throw it at the end of this video. Yeah, mate. But no, it's been great. Wicked. Right, yeah. let's hit the road again. See you next time. <laughs> well, I had a score to settle. And there we go. Off the top. Obviously, I couldn't film any of it myself because... Uh, would have been a bit tricky, but there's the fish anyway. And a lovely way to finish our trip down here at A1 Pits. And yeah, I'm well looking forward to coming back.